Hi, and welcome to week three of our Reading the New Testament course. I'm Dr. Brian Babcock, and this week uh, we actually have two video lectures uh, exploring the Gospel of John. The first looking more at context, the second uh, looking more at themes. So uh, as we look at the Gospel of John, it really is a different kind of gospel. Uh, we continue our study of the gospel writers with a brief review of the gospel of John. We have a discussion post this week and I wanted to provide you with some background information and context uh, as you read through the book of John. The synoptic gospels, which we explored last week, look at Jesus's life from essentially the same perspective. We share similar stories, chronologies, teaching, and emphasis. The Gospel of John, however, stands apart from them. If for no other reason, then at least 90% of the Gospel of John contains new information. John also implies a unique chronology depicting a three-year ministry where the synoptics uh, really represent a one-year ministry. In addition, John stresses different aspects of Jesus' teaching. In John, Jesus' close relationship to the Father and his descent from heaven are highlighted in multiple places. John also emphasizes Jesus' ministry in and around Jerusalem in ways that is different from the synoptics. Because of these unique features, whether John was trying to write a theological or historical message is highly debated. Many scholars today argue that John was not trying to record what really happened, but rather a profound meditation on the theological significance. In contrast, however, Craig Blomberg argues that John records a high level of historical accuracy perhaps more than the other Gospels. It is important to note that despite the differences, John's Gospel does not contradict the synoptics. Rather, it supplements them, giving us a richer picture, picture than if we relied on the synoptics alone. None of the Gospels intends to give us an exhaustive picture of Jesus' life, but rather provide a selection that drives home the pointer points that the writer had in mind. Other secular writers of antiquity wrote this way also. Plutarch tells us that when he wrote, he chose what was needed to make his point. Regarding those historic figures, who were his subjects, he says, we select from their actions all that is noblest and worthiest to know. John selects as well, as do the synoptics, and makes the comment that if everything Jesus did were written down, the world could not contain the books that would be written. And he says this in chapter 20, verse 30, and chapter 21, verse 25. Turning to John as author, the fourth gospel does not specifically identify the author. However, the belief that John, the son of Zebedee, one of the original twelve apostles, wrote the fourth gospel has been held uniformly by the early church fathers and for this reason became the traditional view in the Christian church until modern times. It appears that the attribution according to John was added two or three decades after the book was published. Internal evidence points to John as the author. Most prominent is the phrase concerning the book's author, the disciple whom Jesus loved. And we find that uh, one place is in John 21 verses 20 to 24, which is widely understood to refer to the apostle John. In addition, the gospel provides an eyewitness account which attaches the, gospel, or the authorship to one of the twelve apostles. Finally, the depiction of John versus Peter makes John the likely author. 
For instance, John is shown to relay Peter's questions to Jesus in chapter 13. John is the only disciple present with Mary at the cross in John 19, and John is the first at the tomb and the first to believe in John chapter 20. Each of these internal references supports the conclusion of Johannine authorship. The external evidence further supports this conclusion. The Gospel of John was known and used authoritatively from the very earliest times. This can be seen in the early papyri uh, of Ignatius of Antioch around 110 AD. In addition, Justin of Martyr in 150, Teratian, and Athenagoras all attest John as the author. Explicit references to John's authorship of the fourth gospel are found in addition in Theophilus of Antioch and Irenaeus. And Irenaeus, Irenaeus actually says, John the disciple of the Lord, who also had learned upon his breast, and that's in John 13, did himself publish a gospel during the residence at Ephesus in Asia. What is especially significant about the Irenaeus testimony is that he derived much of what he says from Polycarp, who died in 156 AD when he was 86 years old. So Polycarp, who was a follower of John the Apostle and the other apostles, knew them personally and attested to John. As we look at the date and lo location, although still debated, the traditional view puts the writing of John's Gospel in Ephesus between 80 and 95 AD. This fits with the likely location of John at the end of his life. In addition, the intimate knowledge of, his, of Palestine that the Gospel displays is due to the author's personal experience of the events described. Finally, the language is similar in tone to the less restrained verbiage used by Ignatius referring to Jesus as God. As we explore the purpose of writing, as it is true with all the Gospels, John's goal is to paint a portrait of Jesus by drawing from what he and others have witnessed and shaping these recollections to convey an appropriate message. In the case of John, we have the author's own words to guide us. John is writing so the readers might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and by believing have life in his name. There is much more of John's gospel than this, however. In accomplishing his purposes, John emphasizes several truths about Jesus' person and his works. That concludes our first mini-lecture on the background to the book of John. In lecture two, we will turn to explore the themes uh, that John presents in his gospel.